This might be a nice spot to sit and knit. Stump here and the water behind. Also got a stump that's a little taller over here. Right on the trail. But I think I want to go a little bit deeper into the woods. Let's see what else we can find. Another nice spot if I wanted to sit over the water. This little piece of log that's come off that tree makes me think of a a canoe that started to be worked on. But still a little bit out in the open. I think I still have another spot in mind. I think this is going to work, you guys, if you can hear me. This is a totally set up episode of the podcast. I wanted to get to the woods today by myself. I wanted to cast on a new cast on and do that with you guys. And I mean, I could have just done it and then talked to you about it, but I really wanted to bring you along with me. So I am set here in our woods. And I have some knitting, I have some coffee, I'm going to record this quickly and then I'm going to check to be sure that you can hear me. So what am I casting on today? I'm casting on from Patricia P410, I'm going to try to get over here because then the light seems about right. The Treasures from the Forest Shaw. I don't need another Shaw. I have several. But uh, first of all, I want to support Patricia, of course. But Treasures from the Forest really spoke to me. Bringing home pine cones and leaves and feathers and stones and bark on our walk through the woods. Now, our woods here in the middle of the mitten, Michigan's lower peninsula, in the upper Midwest of the United States is nothing like the beautiful ancient looking forest that we see in Patricia's vlogs and from some of our other Scandinavian friends. Um, it's not like what we see in Appalachia of the United States here. It's not like what we see in the Rocky Mountains. But this is an old farm woods. It's got big trees and small trees. Some have been harvested. Some have been used for fence posts on the farm. Some, we have ironwood, um, American hornbeam here in the woods, and I'll insert a picture. I meant to bring a little prop to show you that those are as hard as iron, and uh, my husband has made um, hangers and uh, bridle hangers and harness hangers in the barn, not from cutting them down, but if a tree falls down, if one of the, the hornbeam or ironwood trees falls down, um, you, can, you can make something out of it. But if you use a chainsaw even on it. It will shoot up sparks. It's so hard and it grows near the water and it has a beautiful bark. So I'll take some pictures to show you. I forgot to bring one of the little um, hangers that he has made in the past for that. But so this is a farm woods. There isn't um, fresh water. There is standing water at different times of the year and you know then that gets kind of stagnant so that's not so nice. We don't have that beautiful flowing creek like we see in some of the other woods around the world or even the woods that I grew up near. It was near a river and there was a, a creek with fresh flowing groundwater and that was quite active. So we don't have that here, but still I thought you'd like to see it. I sat here underneath this beautiful tree and uh, there's actually a little patch of violets, blue violets, and there's dog tooth violet nearby. So um, I thought, well, I'm just going to take a little time. I don't have a lot of time, but I am going to cast on and do a few rows of that shawl. I'm wearing my Tencho sweater that I love. I have on my Sagastat mitts 
that has some of the wool from Patricia's sheep in it. And I'll show you the yarn that I'm going to make my shawl from. It's a little bit thicker, um, a very heavy sport weight or a light DK. And this is mill spun with wool from our sheep. And this is some of the yarn that I've showed you before that is fairly nice, but it does have some overspun and some underspun parts. And I think it will make a nice squishy shawl and a nice color. And so that's how I'm going to honor the sheep flock by using my own yarn. So I'm going to also, the pattern I think calls for a size eight needle, and I'm going to try cast on first with a 10 because I don't want it to be extremely heavy, you know, dense, and um, because this is thicker yarn. So I'm thinking that I should pour myself some coffee in that handmade mug. Like so many of you, during all of this time, the knitting, the desire for knitting kind of comes and goes. Um, I did cast, find something off that was deep, had been on the needles for a long, long time. I may show you that here. Um, and I've frogged a couple of things. I have one skein, partial skein wound up. That's what I'm going to cast on with. And like I said, I think I'm going to start with the tens. I brought the eights as well. And I'm sitting on um, a wool pad that's a braided chair pad. It's not quite like the felt pads that we saw from the people who took trips to Norway, but it was the closest I could come to. Oh, really good coffee, you guys. If you can't hear me, maybe I'll just talk, you do some audio over the top. I'm just doing a backwards loop cast on since it uh, starts with just a few stitches. So I've, Patricia has two patterns on now, and a lot of people have knit her first one, but I don't see so many um, with the second one. And I was really drawn to this second pattern. So I don't think there's any knit-alongs or anything for it, but. I think doing it with the bigger yarn and on these bigger needles, it's going to go a lot faster too. doesn't blow over. I'm looking down at my instructions. Okay, so I did my few setup rounds. think this is probably going to end up being a really, really big shawl with this yarn and these needles. Oh, I'm looking a little rumpled, aren't I?
Is anyone else casting on for this shaw? If you are, let me know. Okay, now I'm getting ready to start what's going to be the right side row. And I brought along a progress keeper that's one of Patricia's. So I'm going to mark my right side row. Oh, there's a pair of wood ducks. Oh, I wish I could get the camera turned around quick enough. I thought I could hear something. Now I've disturbed them. Oh, I love to see wood ducks. Do you know what they look like? They're small ducks and they, they um, make a nest in a, a hollow of a tree. I think they like it to be near water. This is near water. This wasn't mallards though. We sometimes have those. We sometimes have the Canadian geese out here in the woods too. Wood ducks are quite small. Maybe if I think of it, I'll put a picture in. Or you could Google it and see what they look like. Patricia, I don't know how you make these tiny little things. My old arthritic fingers hardly can work them. And to think that you make them. Okay. Now to see what I do next. Glasses. Because then after I think the setup rows, things, it's um, a pretty a simple thing for a while. You can probably hear the highway. You know, during all of this um, shutdown, quarantine, we didn't hear the highway very much, and that was really nice. But it started back up again. It just is that constant background noise. You know, I really love the old wooden bamboo needles. I just go back to those all the time. Especially my old pears. I think that the wood was higher quality back in the day. I think this nice um, kind of a taupe oatmeal color will be nice. This is from a mother-daughter pair um, Coradale used, some of our old, old bloodlines. I say old, not nearly as old as the, the breed that Patricia is preserving, her heritage breed, but as I've said before, my old Coradale bloodlines are kind of my heritage breed. And this is a mother-daughter pair that were um, 
direct, well, daughter and granddaughter of one of my original two ewes. Oh, I could sit here for hours if I didn't have to get back to the house. We're due to get a freeze this weekend, maybe even snow. And here it is, the second week of May. There, I think I can show you this. It won't be giving away anything of the pattern, but there. Oh, come on, little progress keeper, turn yourself around. There. I'll leave the camera on for a few more minutes and go a few more rows. I can always edit it out if it's too long and too boring. Can you believe I've drank that cup of coffee already though? So I'm going to pour myself some more. Another reason that I chose this yarn uh, and the color that it is is because I think it's a, a good representation of our woods. This woods is mostly oak. Um, ash, but of course the ash are dying back so much here in Michigan. And some maple, but so most of the leaves and the colors that we see here. This is, there, that shows pretty good I think. There's one of our oak leaves. We have some birch, we have some, uh, some pine, and we have some um, lurch. Which larch is kind of, I always thought that the color, the New Tedon yarn, no, this isn't New Tedon, but this is from on, on Ray's fiber. Uh, it, the colors of this reminded me of the larch, larch tree. And so that's what we see an awful lot of. There, the sunlight's going to catch it a little bit. So this, and we see a lot of acorns, acorns. I don't have any whole acorns sitting here, but some acorn caps. I can't see if that's focusing or not. And the bark that we have here. I mean, of course we'll have more green when the leaves all come out and the underbrush, but Oh, like the maple, even the, you know, the, the first maple leaves are reddish brown. I'll take some pictures of that for you, too. So this color quite represents that, I think. I still have to look. I'll get I'll get to where it's more familiar. Can you hear the crow? Okay, I think I'm going to shut the camera off and knit for the few minutes time that I have left. Um, I may 
I may turn the camera around and film a little bit so you can see what I'm looking at. But so that's my little visit with you guys today from the farm woods. I sure hope the sounds okay on this so I can publish it for you. And thanks for coming along with me. Really wish that we could be here chatting, sitting with our knitting. And again, if any of you are going to knit Patricia's Treasures from the Forest Path, I think that's what it's called. Something to do with treasures in the forest. So uh, I'll put a link down below. Let me know if you are casting that on or if you have cast that on. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Here I flip the camera around to show you what I'm looking at from this spot I'm sitting. And you see what I mean about the drabness of color here in the woods. Of course, part of it is that the leaves aren't out, but we don't have that evergreen, especially along the ground. Let's see if you can see. Isn't the sky beautiful today? And as I sit here and look this way on the path, I'm kind of down a hill, down in a little cove. So you can see here, I'm looking up the hill to a little ridge there. And that's actually one of our, let's see, that's our fence row on the west. Someone other than us has been driving an ATV in the woods. There you go, girl. Your foot doesn't even hurt now, does it? <laughs> 